Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Newsgram. Let's begin today with Isaac Newton's third law, action and reaction. For every action or force in nature, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Now, scientists will debate my use of the word equal because there are times when that may not necessarily be the case. But since this is not a physics course, and for the sake of this podcast, let's just say that when object A exerts a force on object B, then object B also exerts a force on object A. Forces are an interaction between two objects or people, and when it comes to human interaction, actions, by the force it takes to create them, can and often do deliver more force than words. Holy smoke, that's probably up for debate as well. Anyway, are you having fun yet? I know I am, and I'd like to introduce you to Natalie White. She's author of the book, Workplace Actions Matter, and she's gonna sort all this out for us. For example, if I'm in a call center environment and I talk to you on the phone and you're you're calling to inquire about uh, the status of your benefits or the status of your application or just to you're having an issue with uh, uh, a service or a product that you got and our interaction, the way we're talking to each other is going to have an impact on if that client is going to come back or not. It, and if that client is going to trust even your brand. So that is powerful for leaders to understand that the front end uh, delivery person has a big impact on your brand. So if you're polite, if you go the extra mile, if you, you don't have to agree, but if you're respectful and understanding that the client feels that he's understood, well, then most likely he's going to come back. And this has been backed up with years of research uh, that proved the relationship, the direct correlation between client satisfaction and employee uh, engagement as well. There are 13 national standards that have been created to ensure a healthy workplace environment. And I'm not going to get into all of them for you. You're welcome. I just wanted you to know that they exist and that they're there for our personal growth as well as our physical and mental health. The workplace is an important environment. What we do and how we do it says a lot about who we are. And cantankerous clients can easily lose sight of all that. That being said, they are a client after all and business needs them. So what do you do when they become unbearable? You can't fight a client, right? As an employee, we should never get abused by any clients, but you can be respectful and say, sir, miss and sir, at this point in time, the language that you're using is offensive. I really want to support you and help you in resolving your issues. But if it's continuing in that direction, I won't be able to. You give them, I think, uh, I, <laughs> I used to work in that environment and being firm and being polite with them protects you as well as an employee. And some client needs to be reminded that. That's a great example. And getting back briefly to Newton for a minute, this is where good leadership comes in. Workplace culture is set and reinforced by its leaders. It's kind of like a dual relationship. The employees also need to trust that you as a leader, you'll be able to support them if the clients say, because what's the number one uh, thing that clients that are dissatisfied with you will say, well, I want to talk to your supervisor. The supervisor needs to trust that the employees did their job and that if the client uh, continues to be belligerent, he's going to uh, set their own boundaries because leaders are employees too, eh, at the end of the day. Everybody has a boss, even if you work for yourself. When it comes to leadership, I'll bet you can think of some great leaders and some pretty miserable ones as well. Good companies, trusted companies, have good leaders and good leadership styles. It's one of the things that makes them, well, what they are. She says in order to be a great leader, you need to be authentic in your relationship to the company, to your colleagues, and to yourself. Obviously, there's key leadership competencies that helps you to do that. You know, like some people think that leadership is a charismatic, charismatic leader that you see out there that is all that. But no, leadership can be learned. You look at yourself, who you are, what you do, and the impact that it has on other people, on yourself, and on the organization. I'm a true believer that 
anybody can be a leader. You just need to make the choice to be a leader. And it's a conscious decision. And you, you need to set that path forward. And Natalie knows all about this firsthand because she did not set out to be a leader. She was an employment counselor, but one day she made a conscious decision to be a leader, influenced mostly by Simon Sinek. According to his website, Simon's TED Talk on the concept of why has been viewed over 60 million times. Start with the why. Why is it do you want to be a leader? Once you understand that, you can build around that and get that gives you your energy. You're forced to move forward. And here we go with Newton again. But when it comes to a force, a little goes a long way. Think about the power of an atom. She says to make the biggest and most positive impact, you and your company need to be in sync. When you spend 40 hours a week at uh, work, you have your colleagues there, you have your supervisors there, you have your client, you need to gain energy from somewhere. You know, you need to have that purpose. Your purpose needs to be aligned with the purpose of the organization. And it doesn't matter if you're working in the public sector or the private sector. Her book invites you to reflect on your own experiences, your objectives, and then build on your existing practices. A key takeaway for me was the importance of being mindful of others. Our actions impact others, and we need to be conscious of the consequences of our behavior. As leaders, your relationship with your employees, your action with employees, does have an impact on service delivery. Because if you don't treat your employee well, they won't uh, serve their client well, which affects your bottom line. That has been supported by over 20 years of research by the Institute of Citizen Services. That's what I like about the book is I was able to bring all of those years of practices together. Her book is quite a resource and we've only scratched the surface today. Here's an example of trust from the restaurant business. It seems so simple, but it's interesting to think about both sides of a transaction. If I go to a restaurant, I trust that I'm going to have the same quality. I'm trusting that I'm going to have a good meal and a good ambience. Like I'm buying the brand, so I trust in the brand. It's the actions of the waiters that's going to create that memorable experience or it's going to set me back where I'll never want to go ever again. Yeah, you really say, oh, wow, she must have had a terrible argument with her boss because that was probably the worst service that I've ever had. You just make a note to go somewhere else next time. Speaking of notes, all of this can be found on her website. It's note to self learning solutions.ca. There you can not only get a copy of her book, Workplace Actions Matter, but you can take advantage of some of the learning opportunities that she offers that are based on the key concepts in her book. And you might be asking, why is it called Note to Self? The Note to Self is that we all have the experience. We all know what is it that we have achieved. We all have uh, the potential in our hearts and in ourselves, in our competency. We just need to focus on it. What is it that we want to achieve, you know, the direction that we want to go? One thing I've been taking for granted here today is that you enjoy what you do for a living, because that is an important factor. But even if you don't love it, you can still love aspects of it. Natalie says each of us as employees have 100% control over our destiny at work. There's no magic solution to all of this, and you don't have to wait until everything is perfect to begin your journey of self-improvement. Ready for a little bit more math? Here's an equation that I think you can remember. Actions equals energy in motion equals trust. And I'd like to continue the conversation with the readers because I do have a blog there and I would love to talk about wellness and service excellence and leadership and so forth. If any of this sparks an interest, you can find her book, Workplace Actions Matter, in all the usual places online. or her website. And if you've already forgotten, it's note to self learning solutions.ca. There's a link in the show's description for you, and that will do it for this edition of Newsgram from webtalkradio.com.